In this video lesson, I'm going to look at creating my first volume group. So I've got my virtual machine open that I plan on using throughout this course. I'm going to go ahead and minimize it. And I'm going to use a terminal. And of course, if you're on Windows, you can use PowerShell to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and SSH into this machine. So the command I'm going to use is SSH, my username for the computer, at the IP address of the computer. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter and type in my password. All right, so now I've logged in. And I'm going to go through a couple different commands with you so that you can kind of get familiar with what's going on on my computer. First command is lsblk. And if I run lsblk, I can see the hard drives that I currently have on my computer. And here is the hard drives that I have, SDA, SDB, C, D, and E. SDA, in my case, is where my operating system is installed. And I can see that it is broken down into two different partitions, SDA1 and SDA2. Partition 2 happens to be where the actual operating system is installed. And I can see that this one is 10 gigs. This is 1 meg. And I can see here that the forward slash, which represents the root of my file system, is mounted here on this particular partition. This drive I plan on leaving alone throughout this course. We're going to leave that alone. That's where my operating system is installed. I plan on using SDB, C, D, and E for my course. And these are the drives I'm going to manipulate with volume groups. And these are all just one gig drives that I set up in that virtual machine in the previous course. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, uh, the command that I want to run to see if I have any volume groups is VGS. And if I run it, I'm going to run into my first problem. And that is that I do not have the privileges as my user account to run this command. So I can use sudo VGS. It's going to prompt me for my password. And now I can run that command and nothing returned back, which means that I do not have any current volume groups set up. I could also, if I wanted to, run sudo su. This will make me the root user on my computer. And now I can run VGS without having to run the sudo command. I prefer, I'm going to go ahead and type in exit to go back. I prefer to actually just run the sudo command. So I will be doing that throughout the course. However, if you don't like to run the sudo command, you can always switch over to the root user on the operating system. All right, so my first command, vgcreate, is what I'm going to need to actually set it all up. So sudo vgcreate. This is going to create the volume group, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. I'll just call it my data hyphen vg. Now, if I hit enter here, it's going to tell me that I'm missing something. I need to have an actual physical volume, and they give me the syntax here of how this command is supposed to be set up. vgcreate whatever the name of it is, VG new, that's the name, and then I need to have at least one physical volume. So if I hit the up arrow, let me go ahead and add a physical volume, SDB. Now I have the ability to add additional volumes here, but I'm planning on only using one for this particular lesson. In a future lesson, I'm going to be adding in manually each one of the other drives that I have. I could also decide, if I wanted to, I can use a couple different key combinations here. I could use B comma C, and that'll allow both B and C to be part of the group. But I'm going to make it nice and simple and just use dev SDB. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and you can see that my volume group was created successfully. So now that I have a volume group, let's see if I can find some details about it. First of all, I'll run the sudo VGS command. And this is my volume group right here, my data hyphen VG with one physical volume associated with it. You can see the PV here. If I go across, I can see the size is, well, let's say 1,020 mega, megabytes, which is really going to end up being one gigabyte. So that's the size of my hard drive. It's basically, it fills up the volume group size, whatever hard drives we have associated with this. So if I add two of these hard drives, that would now make it two gigabytes or 2,000 megabytes. All right, that's one command that I have to work with. If I'd like to see some more detail, I can run sudo vg display. And then this command allows me to add the dash v for verbosity. And I can add additional v's up to four to see more details. I'm going to go ahead and just use one v because this is going to give me the details that I need. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And this is why I've logged in with a terminal rather than the VirtualBox machine is because this allows me to scroll and I can kind of go back to the top here and see all of my data. So here is my volume group. The VG name, so this is the name of my volume here. I can see, there we go, 
I can see that it's using LVM2 as my format. And I can see that this is read and write. And I can scroll down a little bit further here. And I want to look here. I have currently one physical volume listed right here. And I can pull out some of the parameters here. So this is it's one gigabyte or roughly 1,020 megabytes. And then I get this PE, which I want to talk about. The PE are my physical extends. Now these are the little sections of my hard drive that are broken up. And they're broken up into four megabyte sections. So I take my one gigabyte hard drive, and then the volume group actually works with little small four megabyte sections. This is the default size. So it breaks it all up. And if I did the math, and I broke up one gigabyte by four, that would give me 255 of those. So this is the math here, 255 total physical extents. All right, so those are those little sections that the volume group breaks up of my hard drive, and that's what it works with. And I can see that I've allocated none of them, or zero, and I currently have 255 free, which total 1,020 megabytes, or roughly one gigabyte. My volume group is given a unique identifier right there, and then I can see when I added the dash V to this command, it's given me the option to look at the physical volumes associated with this particular volume group. So PV name, this is my physical path or the path to this device that I'm going to work with for the physical volume. And the hard drive itself, which I'm going to call it a hard drive or a solid state drive, it gets converted over to what's called now a physical volume. So the term hard drive is no longer used in the volume groups. They're really called now physical volumes as opposed to hard drives or disk drives. So this is the term physical volume for this. But it gives me the path of where this is. It gives me a unique identifier for it. I can see that's allocated. And it currently has all of the physical extends free. I haven't allocated it to any logical volumes or formatted or done anything else special to it. Now, speaking of that, let's go ahead and talk about uh, my hard drives when I first set these all up were blank brand new hard drives on my virtual machine. If I tried creating the same command again and I already had a hard drive that was pre-partitioned I may have used it for something else, I'm going to run into a problem and it's going to tell me that it was filtered and it won't create this. So if you're following through this lesson in this course, you're going to have everything work just fine for you. But I want to bring my first problem. So how I would fix that, and I'm going to use drive C for that, is I could always run sudo fdisk slash dev sd and I'm going to put C here. And this is going to allow me to manipulate the formatting of my drive. And so I don't need to do this in my case, but if you get to the point where you're trying to create this and it says that it won't create it and the drive has been filtered, you may have to go in and change the partitioning table, delete the old partitioning table. So you want to make sure that there's no data on there that you want. But just as a quick to show you a troubleshooting step here, I would go ahead and if I hit M, I can see all of my commands but I would want to create a new either a DOS or a GPT part base partition. So I could do O and then I could do W and then that would have cleared my drive C. Or in my case, if I were using B and B would not have worked, I could go ahead and do that. So I wanted to throw that in there as just a little bit of extra information. If you're having trouble with maybe a pre set up device and you're working with physical drives and they've already had partitions on it and it just won't work for you, try clearing the old partitions first. Again, in my case, all of my hard drives are blank, brand new hard drives to work with, so I'm not running into any issues with that. Okay, so let me go ahead and just show you sudo vg display dash vv. And if I put two v's in here, you can see that they've added just a little bit more additional information here. And of course, I can max it out at four v's and there is a lot of additional data here. So the more Vs, the more information that I can actually see on what's set up. So in this lesson, we've gone ahead and created our first physical volume. I've set it all up so that I have a single drive that is associated with it, and now I can see details about it. One more command that I want to show you is sudo. I could type in PV display, and if I do that, I can see here's my physical volume. So if you noticed L uh, or PV display and VG display, it's, it's just a changing of what it is that I'm looking at. And so PV display, I can see here's my drive and I can see that that drive is associated with the volume group called my data VG. And in case you're wondering, yes, I can run sudo PVS as well. 
and that gives me a quick little summary of my drive, the volume group that it belongs to, and the format that it's using. All right, so that concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, I will be creating my first logical volume on this particular volume group.